welcome to another episode of Historic Holidays Kitchen. My name is Corey Van Seifeld, and I am a historic interpreter at the Little Tin Museum, and I specialize in cooking history. In this episode, we'll explore the history of gingerbread. Gingerbread has been around for thousands of years, but it has some little fun tidbits of history. For example, Elizabeth I used to have gingerbread men made in the likeness of visiting dignitaries. And then of course, there's the all-time favorite fairy tale of the gingerbread man who jumped off his baking off the baking pan and ran through town and had quite the adventure, saying, you can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man, until he was finally eaten by a fox. Today we will look at how gingerbread was made in the past, using the resources somebody may have had on hand. To begin with, we'll start with Andrea in the 1860s cabin, where she is making a gingerbread cake. Then we'll join me in the 1890s house, where I will be making fairy gingerbread, or gingerbread cookies. Let's go over to Andrea in the cabin. Hi, and welcome back to the 1860s cabin, where today I'm going to be making gingerbread cake. And I'm making gingerbread cake because I don't have a wood-burning stove, all I have is the fireplace, and I don't want to make cookies in Dutch ovens, so I want to make a cake. And gingerbread was considered, because ginger was soothing to the stomach, so it was considered kind of an invalid bread, um, but it also lasts a long time with the spices that are in it. So they would make it during the holidays. This one is very basic. It has flour, it's three cups of flour, and then we add uh, ginger to it, and a little bit of salt. We just mix that up. Oops. <laughs> a little excited there. I love gingerbread. And that's all we do to our dry ingredients. Then we take our soured milk, you can also use buttered milk, and then your saleratus, which is actually baking powder in 1860. And you actually dissolve it into your milk, and you do that because saleratus didn't have anti-caking properties, and so you needed to dissolve it in the milk. It also helps activate it in the soured milk. Stir that. And we'll set this aside for a moment. And now I'm going to get my molasses. And my molasses has been boiling over the fire and I have put in my fat into it, which is shortening. And in 1860s, shortening was basically half and half butter and lard. So the butter and lard has been melting in the molasses. So I will grab that and of course I'm working with the fire. You always have to have a hot pad. It's melted nicely. Mix it a little bit. We'll pour it directly onto the flour. This gingerbread doesn't have any more sugar than just the molasses. If you care to add more sugar to it, you can. You can do brown sugar, just white sugar. You can also add more spices if you like, like cinnamon. I'll we'll just kind of stir that up. And now we'll add the milk. Stir it until it's combined. And it will, sometimes it's a little lumpy. This recipe is completely authentic. It has not been adapted from the young housekeeper's friend from 1850. Once it's all incorporated, 
incorporate it in there. A little bit, kind of like that. This is a little thick. You can also add a little bit more milk if you don't want it that thick. Depends on how fluffy you want your gingerbread. Into your cake pan. This cake pan has been buttered and floured. on my buttons. Dutch oven. I have coals on the bottom. I've preheated the Dutch oven over the fire. I carefully lift the lid. You always check the temperature with your hand to see if it's warm enough. And it is. And I don't want to burn myself as I place this in. Right in. There we go. Now you want it as a moderate oven about 350 degrees and it will bake for about 30 minutes and now I'll just put some coals on the top I'll add more coals as, as they cool off Especially in the cooler weather, it can cool off pretty quick. So now go back to Corey on the 1890s and see how she's baking her gingerbread. Today I will be making a kind of gingerbread called fairy gingerbread. It was very common in the 1890s. I found it in a lot of cookbooks from the time period and it's much more cookie-like in consistency than what Andrea made today. Um, it also doesn't have molasses, so it looks very different than what I typically would think of as gingerbread. To make this, I will begin with creaming my butter and creaming my sugar into it. And creaming is just mixing it all together. I have uh, creamed my butter and my sugar, and then I will add my ginger and mix that all together. Ooh, I can smell the ginger coming through. Then I have uh, milk that has baking soda dissolved in it. Pour that into the mixture. And then I have a lot of sugar, not sugar, flour. And I will slowly mix that in to create a stiff cookie dough. I have my dough all mixed up together and I will roll it onto my pan. And the interesting thing about 1890s, especially for gingerbread recipes, is they oftentimes will recommend that you use the bottom of a large um, roasting pan or something similar like this and actually use the bottom of it. Um, all I can guess is that they didn't have cookie sheets specifically, so this was a good way to get it flat. It would roll out. And because we're not cutting these right away, it's easier just to roll it out on the pan that you're cooking it on. So I will use part of my dough. And my pan has been greased and then floured. And then I will use my rolling pin that has also been floured. Now that it's been rolled 
rolled out, I will trim the edges so we get a nice clean edge when all is said and done. And now it's ready to go into our oven. I have got my dough in the bottom of my pan and into the oven it goes. I will bake this on a medium oven for about as long as I would do for cookies. So maybe eight minutes or so, we'll just keep an eye on it until it's nice cold and brown on top. Looks like my cookie is ready. I'll take it out. It's got a nice golden brown top to it. And while I'm making these, I will make them into a domino. So while it's still warm, I will cut it into my domino shapes. Welcome back. My gingerbread is now out of the oven and it's pretty tasty. Of course, 1860s, you always wait a day until you eat. You never eat fresh bread, including cake. So it actually has cooled, sunk just a little. But to bring in a snowy look to it, we're gonna add a little bit of powdered sugar. we are. It looks so appealing. Let's try it. It's the taste of the holidays. And there's the gingerbread. Now to, whoops. <laughs> now to finish off this gingerbread, you can add a sauce to it as well. Victorians love sauces. So I still have some brandy sauce and I will be using my brandy sauce. However, you can always make a sauce out of like apple cider is really good. Or even of course a dollop of whipped cream. And we'll give it a little try. sticky but it's really good if you like molasses and you love ginger with the brandy sauce this is a treat you might want to try so why don't we head back over to the 1890s and see how Corey's gingerbread turned out I took my rectangular shaped gingerbread cookies and I used a simple icing um, to create little domino shapes and dominoes was something that I found in a lot of recipes um, for cakes and cookies to make uh, little rectangular shapes and then cover them like they were dominoes. So I used a royal icing for the, bot the base layer and then I did chocolate for the spots and lines on the dominoes. So let's give this a taste. So I can see how these would last a long time. A um, little crispy and you do get the sweetness of the icing but then you do get a kick of ginger as well. I think the most surprising thing for me when I made these was that 
I didn't have molasses, so I was surprised by the color, how light they are, but definitely very good. Today, gingerbread comes in all shapes and sizes, from house-sized gingerbread houses to pre-made gingerbread kits where you can build and decorate them yourself, to ginger fun gingerbread cookie shapes like these I have next to me. Um, and all of these different types of gingerbread are a nod to the gingerbread that our ancestors have made in the past. Gingerbread has a rich history. What are some ways that you can use gingerbread in your own holiday traditions? To find recipes and more information, please go to our website. Thank you for joining us at Historic Holidays Kitchen and stay tuned for our next episode.